All right, let's go give her some RPMs this time. Here so. Nothing gonna fall off. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. The sprocket walk, you can see, moved over that far. That's what the issue was. Thought I had it tight. Hey guys, and how's it going? We're going to continue on on this mismatch of parts that we're going to try to create a, a funky go-kart out of. And I'll just do a quick, a quick uh, recap of what we got so far done on part one. This is a, I believe, a dingo go um uh, Go-kart of sorts, it would have had a uh, roll bar that we already took off of it and some other pieces. It was missing an engine, picked it up at a swap meet for $100. It all started with that fiberglass shell that you see right there. That was also at a pick. Uh, I was picking up some tires for an air-cooled Volkswagen. That was laying around. It is a pretty much like a half-scale VW Doom buggy body. And this is kind of what started the whole thing. Definitely a cool looking piece. And then, a friend hooked us up with this engine that he corrected me. It was from a recycling center that he saw. And I believe it is a 13 horsepower. Um, I'm going to say it's a Honda knockoff, probably. And we fired that up on the last video. Kind of had to do some modifications. We took the frame. We uh, sectioned it and shrunk it together so the body would fit. Uh, cut the base plate out that would have had the original like 5 horsepower engine on it. Cut up this one. Got this one set up. Took the axles apart, cleaned them up, got a bunch of pieces together. Uh, tires were going flat. We injected oil in them and they seemed to have stopped leaking. So that kind of worked out well. They were really cracked and air was pissing out of everywhere. So we got those uh, fixed up. They do not leak. They are still holding air. It's about uh, five days later. And at the end of it, we kind of fired up the engine, spun everything up, see that it worked decently. The sprocket ended up walking and kicking the chain off and throwing parts everywhere. But uh, fast forward till now, we have a new sprocket and a new brake system. So let's go pull that axle back apart. We'll kind of finalize the brake and the uh, sprocket locations, and then we can start finalizing where the, we're going to drill for the bolt holes for the engine and all that kind of stuff. We can kind of continue advancing on with this project. All right, do some wrenching. Come to me. Spaces. We've got to probably come up with another solution for the spacers. Um, this isn't locking anything. I'm going to unbolt the sprocket. We should be able to slide that whole axle right out of there. There we go. Okay, let's go spot that new sprocket and brake and see if they're going to fit on the axle without any fights. That one seems good. And that one seems good. All right, so we're going to go place all that kind of back together again with those on there. We'll start, you know, finalizing positions. And the game start right off in the beginning. So these are the halves that came with the brake drum. This is the hub. And this is how you want to call it, the brake drum. And it has holes. You say, okay, we'll go line them up. There's the bolts that come with it, right? Well, uh, that's not too sloppy. That looks like right. Try finding a pattern where the uh, little ones play well together. They do not. <laughs> there is no combination where the little holes play well with the big holes. Just saying. So I think what we're going to have to do is use the four large ones. They do line up and I'll have to just get some larger bolts. And even at that, <laughs> see the gap on the top of them? Even though those aren't even the same size and they're offset. So I'll get a bolt that fits the smaller hole and we'll just kind of have them hopefully not have it so that this is doing like this on the axle. So I want to be able to lock that axle from floating side to side. And I think I want to use the brake drum. It's probably the closest thing to the uh, bearing. 
So we have, before, it had shims on it, something like that. Bolted the wheel on, and the, the wheels were kind of holding things left and right. I kind of want to snug it up a little bit, so I'm not trying to crush the frame. Plus, I changed the width of the frame. So I want to try and measure the space that we have between that brake drum and that bearing. I'll get in there. It's like something like that, close to it, right there. Now I'm going to go cut us a bushing out of something. We'll try to stack a couple of pieces that will take up that gap. Are we going to get lucky? Can't get that lucky, can we? Hmm. And I'll make a bushing for in there, and then we'll just worry about one side stacking the shims between the wheel to keep the axle from walking. That way we're not, like I said, trying to crush the frame left and right. So I brought my stash of... I actually brought a whole toolbox over that I have. There's all like bearings and bushings and a little bit of this and that. A lot of these look like they'll have the right ID or close enough. So go grab that, that. What else we got? How about that one right there? See if any of those are close. I don't think brass is going to hurt us. Where's our width? You cut them out of any one of them. How about we do that one that's the closest. I'll shave a little bit of that one off. And we could probably use the other ones for uh, doing the space on the outer part of the axle. And what a better way to do it. With the right machine, let's go call it right there. Hair fat, or I leave it a little fat and a little skinny in case we need to go tweak it. Let's see how that works out for us. And wiggle that out of there. And what do you think? We'll go uh, fat end in. Fat end in. Got to clean the. Got to clean the burr up on the end of it. Hang up a little bit. This thing's called a deburring tool. It's got a little knife edge on it and that's all it does um, it'll take that edge off fits now shaft right roughly where it needs to go it should be right about there and we got our spacer and our brake drum and I'm just looking for where how that brake drum is going to be positioned over the center that actually looks pretty good I could adjust that band a little too I have um washers on the front side of it out here we can you know shift it a little bit left and right but that's looking pretty center and we're right up against it. I'm gonna go get some uh, the keys put in it, the set screws locked in, we'll line everything up, and we'll build this one out to here. A little bit past the thread so that we kind of pinch down on that collar of the bearing. There'll be no walking whatsoever in it. That's all tight, now it looks pretty good. 
Chain tension is um, decent. Again, it's gonna stretch over time, but I think we're gonna end up doing a little bit of shimming over there. So we need to go make up the rest of this space out to here, and we gotta subtract the, the depth of the wheel, the rim, which is going to be right at three inches. So, marker at three, and then we just make up the rest. So the wheel's gonna come to there, and we have to stack up some parts to make it get to that last little bit or cut. I think there's a couple of small ones. You got that one? Actually, will that one make it? Ooh, that's looking close. It might be, it might need a washer. Does that fit or is that the in inside? Yeah, let's go find a washer. Hopefully that's big enough for that and that should be just enough to take all the, the play out of the axle back and forth. We can crush on this bearing. It's not gonna hurt anything for us. We, we can, there's no, we're not preloading the bearing. We're just, the two halves of the um, inner race, we're just kind of pushing against. Actually, I think those two brass or bronze, along with that. I gotta pull the axle towards me. There we go. I'm gonna shave a hair off of one of them. I'm gonna to try to get as close as flush as possible. But again, I, I still wanna leave a little bit of a preload on that. So when we run the nut down, it kinda, of, you know, pushes on it. Yeah, that'll work. Perfect, it's about a sixteenth of an inch preload on that wheel. So we'll throw a washer on that, the nut on it, we'll spin that down. I'll go with that. Yeah. That should lock the whole axle together. kind of happy where the engine is we marked it ahead of time where it was I'm kind of wondering what's the best way to try to transfer those holes down to the base plate to figure out how to go drill that and we don't have much clearance that's one thing you can kind of do, we can maybe like cast a little bit of like paint over it and it'll leave stains down below I don't think get in here on the back one though huh let's try it if it doesn't work I'm gonna, I'm gonna mask off this because this is my location. I'm gonna mask this off and we'll try it, see how it works. If it doesn't work good, we'll take the engine, we'll flip it over, we'll take a piece of paper and we'll make like a, a template out of it and then we'll transfer the template down to here. I'm thinking white. See how that does. Watch, you made a big run. This side's easier to get to. Let that sit up for a second. We'll pop that engine off of there. And hopefully we got some witness marks. So let's look at the brake setup. I think I have it backwards. I copied off of what they had, but I think it's wrong. So they had the collar going around and then pulling on the bottom. The cable will go through here and pull up on the bottom half of it. So if it's spinning this way, it's fighting itself. It'll work, but you're losing a lot of power. I'll, I'll run it backwards to kind of give you the same idea. So if you notice, see how it's, it's dragging? It's pulling the brake band down and it wants to work much better than when I go this way. See, I'm not changing the tension. The wheel's much easier to turn, a lot harder to turn this way. So I gotta take it, flip it around so that the bottom half is in here and we're gonna pull on the cable up here. So I'm gonna flip that around. Hopefully it does not get in the way of the clutch setup that's up here, but uh, Trial and error. There we go, flipped over. I like that better because we're gonna get a better cable pull. So, does it make sense now? Like what's happening? It's kind of, it's helping pull the band around it where the other direction, if we're going this way, it's, it's fighting against us. It's trying to push the band off of there and you can't get as much uh, pressure. Whereas this way, much more drag, this way slips. Perfect. 
That's that little time to set up. Let's go see if we pull that engine off. And hopefully it left with its marks. There we go. Ah! <laughs> One of them was full of dirt. <laughs> so it did nothing. I think two of them were. We got the front ones. Can you tell where that one is? That one is. That one, if we don't disturb it, we can probably figure out what the center of that one is. And... I don't know, we kind of have, yeah, we have half of it. You can tell where the layout is. All right, so I'm going to take a punch and mark them, and we'll open them up. Let's go clean that crap off of there and get rid of that. Get this close. I'm gonna use a uh, three eighths bolt. And we should have a little bit more slop in those for a little bit of alignment. Those should be fairly snug. So I have a feeling I may have to run them up from the bottom. So let me get all that bolted up. We'll throw the chain on it. Uh, maybe we should run the welder while the engine's off. I'm going to go take a minute. I'm pretty convinced we're not going to move it. So let's go buzz that across front and rear. That'll lock that plate down where it needs to go. Turn it up a little. Watch your eyes. Oh, too late, sorry. The blind spot will go away a little bit. One for you. <laughs> Did I miss my hole? One for you. Thought I did, didn't you? I gotta get some washers. Yeah, let me grab some washers for those, uh, the, the slotted ones there. Got four bolts in it, not tight. See how much wiggle room we got? We don't need much. That's good, that should be enough for alignment. And then we can move the the uh, clutch and the sprocket left and right. It's more for the just the, the twist of it.
I shoved two big fender washers under that side, like I said, to kind of work with shimming the chain. Eh, it's probably about right. Again, I do expect it to stretch though. Good. I think we can continue, easy for me to say, continue to work on the ass and we'll work our way forward. I'm thinking maybe we'll throw the body back on it and while well, we get the welder here, let's try to come up with how we want to run the exhaust system. And like I said, we'll start working our way forward with things that need to be addressed. That should be fun. We're touching it in a lot of places, which is good. We might lift up on that nose a little of the uh, power glass shell. Let's see, make sure we don't have any engine issues. Just grab a light, huh? Can you see? Yeah, we're looking pretty close. That spark plug is a uh, lead that we talked about. Up there is kind of tight. Let's go grab a light. All right, that's a little better. You can see that spark plug is just kind of squished against there. We still have a little bit of room around the valve cover to the tin. And the body is just close. Well, we rubbed off that little uh, nub that was on there, ground off. She's tight, but it'll work. All right, let's look inside. I think we could bring, like I said, the nose up a hair. Because we gotta make like a front bumper on it too, because that's just gonna be very vulnerable. And we'll shim that up about, about right there. I'm gonna get a block of wood. Yeah, I should have the four by four under there. Probably lift it up about two inches. That'll give us room for our feet. See what the pedal is right there. And again, uh, not to brag, but I got big feet. <laughs> so that'll give us some room to go work with that in there. Plenty of places to attach the body to. We got this area. We can make some blocks coming up off of here. Grab this tab. We got the the wall back there that we can attach to. And then in the front with a block of wood is we'll probably come up with a, uh, we're going to do a, let's get you looking the right way. We'll get a, uh, like a brush bar that goes across the front of it. Baja bar, it might be called. And we'll have that come up over the front and then we'll try to grab right where that two by four is on the top. So that'll give us uh, plenty of support for the shell. So I think we'll leave that well enough alone. And like I said, we'll continue on with trying to make an exhaust system to fit out of here. I've had two different kind of ideas I was thinking about. One was just kind of like a regular beetle and have like two pea shooters coming out, come down, get like a, a long piece of pipe or a barrel or a muffler, and then have um, a tailpipe and a tailpipe. Then the other one was like a lot of dune buggies have a stinger that kind of comes up, up and out. I don't know which one's gonna be better. Let's go shopping in the scrap metal pile, see what we can come up with, and we'll go from there. There's a stock muffler. It almost looks very close to a VW Beetle flange. So maybe we can kind of like steal the header out of uh, a Volkswagen, because that, that looks like it's all cast. I don't know how well that's gonna play with us like cutting it and attaching to it. Again, let's go shopping. Let's take a quick peek down here, but I think a lot of the Volkswagen stuff is upstairs. What is that? That might be good right there for the pipe part of it. Put the flange. Get us down to where we need to work with. I'll throw that to the side. Uh, that kind of looks like a beetle muffler. We'll throw that to the side. That's why I like these little scraps and bits of stuff to work with, just for this reason. Oh, that one, that's kind of... Actually, that might scale-wise, that might look like a beetle muffler. <laughs> I think someone's living in it. <laughs> Hold on to that. Anything else you want to pick from here? Hmm. Yeah, let's go look at VW stuff and we'll see what we like up there for uh, authenticity. What's that? It's a no pea shooter out of a... That's going to be so restrictive though. If we make make the uh, pea shooter part, you know, stick up out of the back. That's going to be, that's like for 50 cc's. 
upward up into the land of broken Volkswagen parts. Uh, looking for like what's left of an exhaust system. That's a different style. That's um like bus. Wrong location. Still scrounging. They have nothing on them. Cause I was thinking like a heater box flange. This is what I was thinking. Most Volkswagen stuff. Looks like that. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's go grab that's already been chopped up anyway. Let's go grab that piece. Looks like we get another one here. Yeah, it's got a couple of funky bins that might help us. We'll grab those two. And I'll see if there's anything else. I'll, I'll bring you back. If not, I'll meet you downstairs. I think most exhaust systems over here are going to be complete VW systems that I don't want to steal a piece from because then the whole system's gone. But we can eyeball it just in case. If it was a twin engine, we could do really have some fun with it. But it's not. Yeah. Alright, we'll work with what we have. If it doesn't work out, we'll come back up here and do a little bit more shopping. There's a muffler. That's like a standard beetle right there. But it will look like with the two piece shooters coming out. I'm thinking something like that. And a land of tailpipes. What about these? I think these are short. These are what it would actually be on a beetle. Look like they're kind of big. I thought I had a shorter set than that. That might be what I was thinking of though. Yeah, we got a hunk of metal underneath. <laughs> I'm thinking like scale wise for like a beetle muffler, that would kind of be the size of it. And the opening feels fairly decent. Of course it went out to that little pea shooter thing, but we can cut that off, cap it. Where if we were to do something like that, we'll drill two holes in it and we'll come out with two like little tailpipes, make it feel like a beetle. And maybe we'll try to wrap around going to there. You like that? Seem decent? Let's try it. If, it, if it's crap, cut it off and start over. I think everything else is just going to be too big. You know, like, hey, you know, throw that in there. Kind of looks goofy, doesn't it? Chop, chop. You think the chances are that flange... Too tight together. How about... Volkswagen? Flange. Too big. Hmm. So there's that. We could probably take this one and just cut the uh, ends open. How much? How close is it? Mm, it's a decent amount. We could probably just notch the edges right off of that, and maybe make a new one. And we might be able to. Yeah, if we rotate that, make a new one. That elbow might bring us down into a, a decent work area looks a little high may have to cut it and put a little section in there let's start with from the flange come up with something for here and we'll work our way down i'm gonna go look again at the one that was on there i ended up taking the gasket off the other muffler which is that one and i walked around with that and up in the land of broken engine parts is this one gonna do it oh there we go let's um i don't know if we should Let's um, cut it right here and we'll work with that. We'll work with these two pieces, see what we can do. We have to flip that around, give us a little bit more so the muffler would be center. Yeah, that's it. All right, so chop some stuff. Actually, it looks like we marry all that stuff together right there. That might do it.
So let's go something like that. We still have to clean up the edges and the muffler. Get centered and give it a little bit of oil, uh, room for that oil cap on the back side. So what would that be right about? Right about there, but in the middle. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to go clean these two surfaces up so they kind of lay flat together. We'll get a couple of tacks on these two and then we'll work on where we're going to go slice that, mount the muffler. Probably rotate that where it's, um, I think we'll use that tab. Should really come off the engine, not the, should probably try to mount to the engine. That way when we, shift, we shim it, you know, for adjusting the chain, it goes with the engine instead of trying to make a tab on there. Yeah, worry about that when we get to it. Let's get those two to lay flat and get a tack on them. Got them mocked up and I think we're going to have to lengthen like we talked about that middle. That's going to be too close. That's going to be right up. Yeah, it's going to be right up on the engine. This is actually a heat shield anyway. It, was a, it steers the heat. There's a fan blowing across here and it, and it exits out of this side. You think we should go through the trouble of making this a little bit longer? I'd like to see it right down around there. Right now we're going to end up being <laughs> kind of wish the body was back on it. We can kind of see how far up towards the body we can come. And going for it. I'm going to go take this, section it, and we'll add an inch into here. I'm going to hurry some of this stuff up so we can move on to something else, and I'll bring you back. Actually, it might work out pretty good. Here's the, uh, that's what we had, right? like that. So if I was just to take this piece, spin it around, I don't have to, it'll just be one weld instead of two. So we'll figure out where that kind of meets back together and I'll buzz that off. Glue them together. Let's see, we gotta go height first. Let's go with right there, we'll cut that off, and then we're gonna have to cut some of this off to get it to draw in a little further. That's already centered where it needs to be. I have to eyeball this one. See, right about, right about where the marker already is, huh? Let's go like right there. And maybe a little more. Yes, no? Speak now. Cut once. Still thinking how we're going to orient. I ended up cutting between the two lines. See if that worked for us. Pretty good. We'll clean them up. I, I, I probably could go, actually, you know what we can do? We won't tell anybody. We'll just kick that over just a little bit. <laughs> clean them up. We'll get a tack on each one. I'm kind of wondering, I'm going to take a, a minute, see what we can attach this tab to. We could always just cut it right off and um, come with something. There's a bolt right there. It will just come down and make our own bracket going up to that. Here we go. I ended up, um, 
I was going to weld this bracket to it. You can see where I cleaned it off. I'm like, well, why don't we just throw a hose clamp on it? We can kind of make it where you don't have to take the bolt out and have a little bit of a adjustability to it. I'm like, the only thing I was kind of considering though is like, I wonder if we're going to go do the two tailpipes, if that would be in the area of where we need it. I guess so actually what we could probably do is just take the bracket and flip it around. If that's the case, we'll come in here and put the hose clamp here. Let's go get, probably use these. Let's try mocking up like what we think, you know, what we should do for like a, an exit on them where we want to put these. Let's go look at a, uh, a VW and see how it looks on those scale wise. Here's a VW thing. I, can, I want to say they're in pretty decent. Where you say it's like a third in almost on each side. So let's try to mimic that. Actually, they kind of hang down a little too, don't they? I don't know if we'll go with that. Maybe we'll be a little bit better off being center. Now we we'll try to copy that. So if that were the case, it would probably be like right there on each side. What does that work out to? Let's call it, let's go with two inches. We may end up welding that anyway. Like right there. Look about right. So what do we do about that bracket? If we flip that. It's gonna put the, it's gonna be the same thing on the other side, right? Yeah, we'll just throw a tack on there. We'll, we can get rid of that, but for now we'll leave it. Maybe we won't leave it. Get a bridge? I think so. Find out, take that clamp out of there. Yeah, we got it. Go find a couple of pieces of pipe that we like for the scale that we still have to cut this off too and cap that end. Let's try to think something funky to use, like spark plug sockets or something. Let's go see what the stash has to offer. I used to uh, put the stuff in a bucket and dump it every time. Now I just leave it out. I don't even bother anymore. How about that? Get another one. See another one? Yeah, you're looking right at it. You weren't even telling me. Okay. Maybe those two pieces of pipe. I'm going to keep looking just a little bit. See if there's anything else that we like that may look kind of cool on it. We can always go chrome, all right? Oh, that's solid. That's not going to work. What's that one? Yeah, that's a, maybe a piece of handlebar or something. Maybe we'll go with that. It'll have a kind of cool look to it, like chrome VW tailpipes. I'll keep looking. If not, that's, that's what we're going to go with. So we get rid of that little nub that's on there and fill that in. I shove like a little bolt or something in there. We'll just weld it up. How about something like, like that. What do you want to hold that while I weld it? Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Need a stick. Push it with a stick. How about pair of knee grips? Probably would have been a good idea to prep that metal first, huh? <laughs> We take it off and get a better weld on it. All right, let's go drill some holes. Ha and ha. Let's go cut that into two nice little pieces of pipe. I'd say we lower it, offset, why not? Let's go with, make a line, 
of our, it will come in two inches on each side. Let's go with right there. I'm going to take a minute, I'm going to take these, grind them on an angle so they kind of fit up a little bit better. Let me know when it's straight. It's off, it's your fault. I go with something like, what do you think, right there? Facing way downhill. <laughs> they will leave it. Hey, remember the the buggy is up in the air a little too. Uh, that needs to be like like that. Is that too much of a weld to fill? No, I should be able to get that. And we try to repeat it one more time. Get one on that side. Are we looking centered in the hole? Are we centered in the hole? We are centered in the hole. Let's do it again. It's the middle of the hole. Second one's the harder one because you got to match what you did. I'm gonna say about, about there. Now we can tweak them. Yeah, let's... I wonder if we should break this one off and grind it a little more. Step back and look at it. You guys can critique me. That'll shut off in a minute. Hmm. Probably scale wise, maybe, you know, again, 50% of everything is what you think, and it's, it's like a half scale. Like a regular dune buggy is about, eh, about 11 feet long. This is, uh, you know, five and a half, six feet long, so we're coming right in. Let's go grab where did they go, the tailpipes. So I want to go with like half of a beetle tailpipe. You wouldn't, all this wouldn't be exposed. You, you'd lose about that much anyway. I don't know, I think we're about there, right? Let's um, plop the body on one more time and we'll kind of just eyeball things make sure we're good if so we'll yank that muffler off of there we'll weld everything nice and tight and we'll jump on the air cleaner there we go <laughs> yeah, i think we're fine there's plenty of room around everything good i wonder if we should kind of black this out so you don't see it like a regular beetle engine might even be able to do like some little fake something on side to side for the valve covers all right, I'm gonna go weld everything up. Maybe give it a shot of black paint. We'll throw that back on. All right, who caught my error in my ways? <laughs> Trying to get it off of there. And do uh, you see the issue? <laughs> that has to travel off, I don't know, a good two inches. And that bracket that is welded on that side does not allow that movement to get out of there. Even if I, I rack it, it's not gonna happen. So maybe I'll cut that off. We'll go back to talking about what we did with the hose clamp 
and figure out a good happy solution. Might be able to get right by. I just didn't want the looks of it there. Maybe if we paint it black and it disappears, it won't be as much of an issue. Well, it would have been good to have some black, black heat paint, but they don't. So, <laughs> well, apparently I don't have any. Uh... <laughs> How about upside down? It works upside down. The straw must have fell off. Yeah, it's a semi-gloss. But it's probably going to burn off anyway. But at least it'll look somewhat VW-ish. It's hard painting like that. <laughs> I'm going to finish it out, give it another coat. I'm going to hit it with a hairdryer, kind of speed things up a little bit. I can throw that back on. Well, that looks like a right proper Volkswagen half scale VW muffler. And the fact that you got to kind of hide that part of it looks decent. Uh, how I fixed the bracket setup is I pulled those studs out and I ended up just putting two bolts in. The problem with doing that, you're threading into aluminum, and the reason why studs are there, so. Um, you don't pull the threads out. Generally, you run a stud in, you grab, you know, half inch, three quarters of an inch of aluminum, and then you run a nut on, it's got full strength. When you're trying to run it in, you have a tendency to want to pull the threads out, and that's generally why they don't do that. But as long as you don't take it apart too many times, it shouldn't be an issue. And now it comes off with that uh, bracket like we had it. Neat. Let's go find ourselves an air cleaner tin of some sort that'll fit on there. Let's go upstairs and do some shopping. And this road just has, I guess I lost a bucket there, a miscellaneous, whatever I kind of find <laughs> goes over here in the stash for future chopping up and using in a different fashion than what it was once made. Eh, probably, you know, can or something, like I said, we can take apart. That's funky. Huh? And try to, an old can of sorts, I think, is what we're looking for, with a, with a lid on it. You use that thermos. Eh, thermos is kind of big. We'll find something. It just hasn't jumped out at it at us yet. What we got in here? Fortunately, uh, what about that right there, right in front of us? Some goodies in it. We'll keep that in mind. It's a little on the large side, let's see if something about maybe half that size. If not, we'll use that. Guess see how much room we got too. Let's go peek on the other side. I had a container that had a bunch of different cans in it. What we got here? Hmm. They had a lid on it at one point. I'll keep that in mind. That might be a little too small. It might be actually okay. Yeah, but Keep going. It's getting dark. Gotta fix that. And here's like an interesting area. The can looks a little. 
This looks a little large too, but maybe we'll keep that in mind. Just stick this one up. There we go. That. Right. Too bad it has a curve on it. We'll keep that in mind. Spotlight down there. There's a. That's neat. What's that thermos? <laughs> it's probably worth like a million dollars or something, some kind of collectible. Sounds like it's got no insides. Let's go, uh, that might be entertaining. Grab that too. If I find anything else neat looking, I'll let you see, but I'm going to hunt around just for a couple more minutes. That's too big. And pick up all the crap I'm dropping. Found something kind of cool. I wonder if that might be better for like a bike build or something. Save it, but it looks like we can make you know, some sort of air cleaner out of that. Let's go grab that and bring that down too. That's kind of like the tote we're looking for. What about that guy? It's kind of like we had before with the... Um, Missing the uh, strain. What's this thing? Um, like uh, powdered sugar? I think we may be better off with something like this and we'll save the other stuff for like a more of a custom bike build with that neat looking stuff. Oh, anything else in there? Got one more there with no lid on it. Right. Go. Eyeball that. It's about the right scale, I think. Kind of cool, neat green doorknob bring that down we could use that for something too yeah all the other stuff is gonna to be too big we don't definitely don't have enough room for that actually I'm kind of wondering this too maybe I'll just kind of get it in there or you really don't want to cut fiberglass if I don't have to we just have to get past that yeah. might be able to I don't know if we can bend it down too it would be nice if we could find something like a, um, like I said, a, like a, a can, you know, something with like um, a lid that opens up that's only about that deep and we can kind of come down with an air cleaner like that. Something like that. I think we need to kind of keep looking. Hmm. Well, I made an executive decision to shim the body up a little. That's why it's good it's not mounted yet. I got a couple of... Uh, wooden blocks wedged under there. Maybe we'll go with this for now. I was kind of I think this is kind of the shape I was thinking of but with like a, a lid that opens from the top here and we can go like that On it. I was I was thinking So I'll keep an eye out but for now let's punch some holes in this We'll put this over the top of it and we'll call that like the air cleaner plus you could you know put air cleaner uh, material inside there a filter inside there wide enough Won't get your nuts on. I think I make an executive decision. I am chasing my tail trying to find something that is getting forced to fit that spot instead of me just taking my time and looking to find something kind of cool to fit in there. So uh, I make an executive decision and we will put that on hold. How about we take the body off of there and we dribble a little bit of gas down it and we see how that exhaust sounds. <laughs> that sounds like an excellent idea. Yes, I agree. All right, let's go do that. Stuck a little piece of fuel line on there. See if we can back feed that and fill that carb up. Now we have a little bit of reserve too in the fuel line. I think on the first video we were having a problem with um forcing that through. This ought to taste good. That's all the way. I think we might have been running out of fuel and that's why I didn't want to idle. Let's go find out. Back you up and make some noise. Plus everything's hooked up too, so. Let's give her a little prime. Choke. Shall we?
looking. gas that's going to rev higher. What happens is it'll run lean for a second. <laughs> Good. No lube on that chain or nothing either. There's no, also there's no um, key in that tire. So this, this one's freewheeling. Causing that rattle. Neat. Exhaust sounded pretty good, huh? It wasn't terribly noisy. Seemed like it was pushing out both tail pipes fairly even. And about the same temp. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I think we gotta do something with the idle though. Seems like it still does not wanna go idle down far enough. Again, this is the idle speed and it's already backed all the way off. I may try even um, throwing a motorcycle carburetor on there. I go see what I have, something around the, the size of this. And uh, maybe we can come up with something. We can put it, make a manifold. We'll kick it down a little bit lower and then we can put a cool air cleaner on it. Hmm. Decisions, I tell you. <laughs> well, guys, unfortunately, I knew this was going to be a week that was uh, kind of tight on time for how much I can devote to this project. But we got somewhere along. Things are more finalized in the ass end. You know, not, it's just not all slapped together. Everything is correct locations, all welded up. The exhaust system's made. Um, brake systems lined up. We have a good clutch system that's not going to fall apart. Things are permanently welded. We have a cool looking VW Beetle muffler on there. And we still have you know, plenty to do. I wasn't going to get it all done in this uh, video anyway, but I was kind of hoping to at least have the uh, everything in the back buttoned up. That didn't happen, but uh, you know, we will get to it. We have a gas tank to kind of go get. I want to chase, like I said, uh, maybe a different carburetor, motorcycle style that has a better idle speed and then with that we can kind of get another air cleaner to relocate maybe a little bit lower work with the room that we have um we just got to hook the brake levers up the throttle i want to modify that steering wheel to have a uh, maybe a kick up and then a removable steering wheel possibly to get in and out of it easier but those are things for the future as far as this one guys i think we're gonna go call it i want to thank y'all for hanging out with me doing some wrenching uh reliving my childhood that i didn't have of this stuff and uh, I guess I'm living it now till then. I'll see you later That's all buttoned up. Let's go stack some bushings bearings where you want to call them sleeves Do we get out to the Oh, there you go <laughs> Will that do it? Hair play in it hmm. You get a washer that can go over that I don't know if Okay, here's a... What about that one? Ha! That should do it. As long as you can catch threads on the... Actually, I'm screwing up. What are you doing?